Shalom, everyone. As some of you know, I have been the festival coordinator for the annual Feast of Sukkot, translated into English as Tabernacles. Since 2018, other than 2022, when I joined another group, and as a festival coordinator, well, I've learned some very valuable lessons of leadership challenges, if I may put it that way, including some mistakes that I have made. As the old saying goes, experience can be our best teacher. Such as stimulated this video recording and upload onto YouTube. Since founding of Torah True Seekers, if I may say this to begin with as an introduction and also the YouTube channel since 2012, I've come to realize my fruits a little more accurately as time goes on. And let me just say up front that I don't have the fruits to be a church planter, as some people say, or a congregational leader. It's not my attempt with Torah Truth Seekers. So I don't uh, try to pretend to be a head pastor or rabbi or whatever title people like to label a congregational leader of someone like myself, but I'm simply love to teach truth and seek truth and share what I've learned, uh, trying to help bring balance to the force, if I may put it that way, of Bible believers believing that all scripture is inspired, the canonized Holy Bible. Everything else is more like commentary, whether it be Apocrypha books or Talmud or Christian commentaries. Yes, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but not fully inspired like uh, the Holy Bible, as we call it, the canonized one. The Tanakh, often referred to as the Old Testament, in, uh, depending on what circle you're in and background. And the New Testament or Brit Hadashah writings. Translating them hasn't been always inspired, and there's been some tampering with, And but with truth-seeking, we can verify and learn and grow in all this, and that's where I believe my calling has been, and also as a festival coordinator near and also within Yosemite National Park. So to improve my leadership skills in this regard as, and responsibilities as the Feast of Sukkot coordinator, I see the need to express the Torah truth seekers general, may I say general, Sukkot standards, but not limited to this. But as I will begin sharing my video documentation with you online right now, we can read through it together. I'll read it to you as we go through it and expound upon it as I feel inspired. Before I begin reading through this, let me say that these highlights and bolded words are not intended for your benefit, but mostly mine. So please don't take it as if me shouting or insulting anybody's intelligence out there. It kind of helps me as I'm reading through not to skip any keywords and to really highlight and make sure I emphasize words and expound in any areas that I may feel inspired as I go through this as this is the video for the general Sukkot standards for Torah truth seekers, as I and others hopefully out there who like to attend, please hope, pray, and even fast beforehand if you can to encourage compatible, like-minded, and hearted Torah observant and Torah pursuant believers to join us to ensure a very safe, healthy, I'm talking mentally, emotionally, and physically healthy, rejuvenating, Torah-obedient, and rejoicing environment. We're commanded to rejoice. That's one of the big key commands during this time period. You know, for all of those who are interested and inspired to join us, not just anyone, but anyone who feels inspired to join us, and that falls under that category. And on the other hand, I'm hoping and praying and even fasting, that this will discourage the non-compliant believers that, that are not really compliant to join us. Hey, that you know they're not a good fit, uh, don't want to 
be judgmental or condemning in that regard, but simply or even non-believers. We, we want open arms, open arms and an open door policy, as it's also referred to as for respectful people. So please, I don't want to discourage you. If you're not on board with us 100% on everything, and I don't expect 100% of perfection, as you'll see as I go through this, but trying to reach the, right, reach the right balance so that everyone who shows up will rejoice, no serious offenses or big ones, and, and if any uh, little ones or anything comes up, we'll, we'll try to nip them in the bud and take care of things. But um, for those who really shouldn't, that would cause too much or too many immoral and or doctrinal offenses. During this annual eight day, plus eight days, if there's people getting there before and after, it's a holy feast. It's set apart. It's different from the other days of the year in, in all the right ways, according to scripture, the best we know and the best we can. So, again, we cannot expect everyone to be in perfect unity or agreement on everything. I, I understand that, and I think we all do but at least to be in agreement with enough humility and respect for everyone, everyone's beliefs included and convictions, to not negatively affect other sincere believers who are registered and sacrifice a lot. We're all sacrificing a lot in terms of our time, uh, money, uh, finances, uh, a lot of people don't get vacation days. I've never had vacation days paid in all the occupations I've had, you know, since getting out of college. Uh, I've been either self-employed or part-time, and so I have to take the time off, and it's a big cut on my paycheck and, and an act of faith every year. But uh, we do this, so we want good results. We want good fruits and to feel like it's worth all the sacrifices uh, as it's intended. And the blessings and the breakthroughs will come for those who do. And uh, that's other teachings I have on that. But uh, for, for what we're dealing with here, we want to be together for such a long time away from home in our temporary dwellings during these holy times we do take it seriously, including those who we gather with uh, in, in all the right ways and in the right balance. So some examples of non-compliance. I'll give you some examples that we had last year, not to mention any names. We love and, and hope for everyone. But uh, we, you know, th these are things that we don't want to experience again or anything similar to it. First of all, anyone obviously under the influence of offensive addictions. These are things that are just, we're not spying on anybody, okay? They're just coming out and uh, you just can't ignore them, uh, including substance abuses, as we put it, uh, like alcohol, smoking in our public settings. Uh, in California, if you're not here, we have high standards even in the restaurants and in workplaces that there's designated smokers for legally those who are smoking according to legal standards. And uh, even especially hibiscus or marijuana, we also call it I mean, heroin, fentanyl. Do I, do I need to keep going? There's so many others, but I'm hitting on the lighter ones that we people will do and justify on their own time and may show up and have showed up. And so we want to, I want to address this. I, I do, you do want to do the right things and to be, have a safe environment for everybody. So we do not even want to smell or see any substances among the people registered and joining us. Uh, if anyone is not sure, please contact me privately uh, for any clarification. I don't want to go off too much on this, but let me also say that alcohol is okay in moderation according to the Holy Scriptures. And I'll read them a little bit here from Devarim. We have Deuteronomy 14 and also in 1 Timothy. We'll go to those and quote that in a little bit. But it must be also according to the laws of this land, as we put it. Certain public places do not allow even smoking regular cigarettes or cigars or pipes. Uh, which we don't see much anymore, at least here in California. But the campgrounds and motels, yes, they allow alcohol. Um, but please do not offer any alcohol to others within a mixed company of our group. 
such should only be done if you want to hand a beer or somebody or offer it to someone. May it be privately among brethren you know already, would appreciate it, uh, and only privately, as I said, not in the mixed group. We're among brethren you know, who know each other. That's good. But, you know, we don't know everybody who's there, so we don't want to be unintentionally offending people with the, the legal levels of alcohol consumption in moderation without obviously getting drunk. And, uh, of course, if, if it's visually obvious, it's like, oh, hey, I really like it around here. Well, you know, if they are naturally speaking that way all the time, you know, if they're a hair lip or whatever, that's okay. We love everybody, but we don't want to be drug influenced, <laughs> if I may put it that way. So we want to remain lawfully and to remain sensitive to, uh, to not offending others. As it is written, and here I'll quote these scriptures in the Torah, and for Sukkot, especially, this is specifically quoting for the Feast of Sukkot. It says here in Devarim, chapter 14, verses 24 through 26. And this is the Tree of Life version. Now, suppose the way is too long for you, you know, the traveling. For you, you cannot carry the tithe. You know, back then it was more agricultural. And, you know, the tithe is a tenth percent of your increase, whatever that might be. As a Yaakov, Jacob said, everything you give me, I'll tithe on. Everything. <laughs> he didn't limit it to anything. Uh, so anyway, let me continue this verse here. For you cannot carry the tithe because of the place, that holy name, yud heh your Elohim, chooses to set his name. If it's too far for you, right? So if he blesses you, you know, according to how he blesses you, then you are to exchange the tithe for silver, bind it up in silver or money, monetary transformation and go to the place that he chooses the most high el shaddai <laughs> the almighty so many titles and ways to say his name now you may spend the money continuing in verse 26 for whatever your soul desires now we have to understand the context of according to torah not not sinful things not things that are against torah you know, he's talking about cattle, sheep. It says wine and strong drink. Now, translators who know the Hebrew will translate it more accurately and say strong drink. There's stronger drinks than wine included. So, but in moderation, it's, a, you know, it, the, the issue of alcohol is it stimulates your emotions. You know, if you're depressed, <laughs> it's not a good time to drink it if you want to be, unless you want to be more depressed. And over drinking is too easy. And also when you're rejoicing, it can enhance rejoicing. That's why it's, it's encouraged in the scripture to enhance rejoicing, but not, uh, you know, to be drunk, as we should see very clearly from the context of the, all the scriptures. Everything needs to be taken into context of the entire holy canonized Bible. He says, then you shall eat there before Yah, your Elohim, and rejoice. There's that command again. Rejoice, you and your household. And it even says uh, your maidservants and manservants and friends and sojourners and uh, people who are not Israelites. Uh, I'm not going to continue on with that, but uh, just to kind of hit on that scripture. Uh, quoting 1 Timothy 5, verses 23 through 25, it says, No longer, this is also Tree of Life version, no longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach and for your frequent ailments. Now, I've noticed that alcohol, when it gets close to 14%, it kills the yeast in its own grape juice that develops from the grape skins. But as it as we drink it in moderation, it kills the yeast in our in in our stomach and in our body. It tends to be too acidic, with acidic diets, not enough alkaline, you know, raw foods and greens and and things that help with alkaline. And we just don't get enough in our diet. So a little wine is helpful for extinguishing too much even yeast within our bodies. Um, again, please. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to draw any specific lines, but let's be cautious of our consciousness, awareness of ourself, and, and especially how it can offend others. And continuing in verse 24 here of 1 Timothy 5, the sins of some people are obvious, okay? Whatever's obvious, 
outspoken or going before them into judgment, but for others, their sins will follow. So sometimes it takes a, some time for the fruits to develop. So likewise, you know, good deeds are obvious and others cannot lay hidden. Let me continue here with all this being said, you know, no joints are very sensitive and will get offended by any alcohol offered to them and others within eyesight. So I highly respect them. I highly respect that, you know, and uh, even though my standards aren't quite there, I, I respect that. And that's going to be uh, one of our camp rules, if you might put it that way, or standards <laughs> is probably a soft way of putting it. Um, but if anyone gets complaints or complains to me, I will thoroughly question in peace and love everyone involved to help eliminate any substances within our group that would cause offenses to anyone in our group. So let me assure it's a safe place for everyone and avoid offenses. After all, I believe the Apostle Shaul, Paul set an elite example to not even eat kosher meat whenever it would cause brethren to stumble or get offended. And I'm not going to go off on that deer trail or tangent because um, I got YouTube teachings for that. And I know it's, it takes a lot of explanation. I think he was always talking about kosher meat, whether the history of it, you know, not unknown, whether it was sacrificed to idols or not was the issue he was usually talking about under the definition of what all Jews consider food, not, not, that's not food. So uh, let me say that last year in 2023, we had someone very offensively, highly violating such high standards of anti-substance abu abuse, overly sensitive to correction. He just wasn't humble, yelling at the top of his voice, yelling to anyone who tried to gently express such offenses. And so we had to eventually ask him to make a choice. One, either to stop joining our gatherings under the substance of such influences that were obvious, or simply leave our Sukkot location. He chose the latter, which was not easy for anyone. We all love him, pray for him, and continually do uh, love him. And But, you know, simply... This did help cause our remaining Sukkot to become more ideal in every way. In the spiritual realm, even in the physical realm, the weather became epic and perfect after that. Quite the opposite to before that. So we were confirmed by the fruits that the right choices were made in that regard. Moving on to another topic here. We, last year we had someone bring an air-powered BB gun rifle. Although generally harmless, right? A BB gun, air powered, yeah. But such can still cause serious damages to people's eyes. If uh, something goes into somebody's eye, anything for that matter. But even considering fear factors of people seeing guns, seeing weapons. And one of the problems with this air powered rifle is it looked just like either a 12 gauge shotgun or some type of high powered rifle. I don't know a whole lot about the differences by visually looking, but it, it looked real and it looked dangerous and very deadly. Like uh, we see a lot of hear about a lot of these shootings in the United States. Um, it looked like it was a setup for something that like that that might develop if someone's carrying that and anyone in the public is seeing it. And another problem with his father who had it, he was dressed all in black with a black mask and a hoodie, which made him look more like an ISIS, you know, member or Hamas terrorist. It just didn't look, talk about, you know, not avoiding the appearances of evil, but you know, and it was being done during daylight hours. And another problem is he was get, offering his four-year-old daughter shooting practice, target practice within the public campground. With There was a good safe backdrop of the hill. Yes, okay. No one in the background could have got hit or anything. But it triggered multiple 911 calls. Armed county sheriffs and or police showed up. And they wanted me to go around looking for the individual and, and found where he hid the gun. And boy, it took him, you know, to jail overnight and uh, confiscated it, it regardless. 
but he was released once they realized he was harmless and he he did have good intentions and 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 let him go back to his family and and so we uh, learned that lesson so needless to say please according to our sakot standards no firearms exposed to the public or others in our group please don't expose anything like that anything that looks like any kind of deadly weapons, uh, especially to the public around us. I'm not addressing self-defense issues and people who are prepared for that, especially what's going on in this country and against terrorism or, you know, people going ballistic, as we say, uh, against innocent ones like us. Um, I'm not going to micromanage and try to investigate and inspect everybody's personal belongings. Okay. And I don't think any of us need to do that, but obviously let me add, however, you know, water guns such as super soakers are okay, <laughs> but please don't have anything that looks like it might be real, uh, something that might be good for the water areas and, and not be mistaken as, as a real potential ballistic uh, episode that would trigger 911 calls and, and, and just cause any fear factors. Uh, hopefully that's obvious to everyone. Um, again, I don't want to micromanage manage whatever is legal and safe for all of us. According to the laws of this land, that is key to remember in the Torah, you know, a written one, including the instructions from the entire canonized Holy Bible. Now, Speaking of guns, uh, since we're on that topic, I want to temporarily stop sharing this document with you as I will speak to you as a personal trainer and coach, endurance coach. I do support the right for bare arms, only these type of guns, if I may put it that way, but please not too boastfully, whether in our group or to the public it's okay. All right. Let's move back on to my sharing of the video document here uh, going through with you. Seriously speaking, let's get back on a serious note here. Uh, please dress very modestly, which can be more challenging in the water swim areas and or during hot weather. For men and women, okay, let's let's be equal here in this regard. For all ages, at least over three years of old, please no two-piece bathing suits. All right, unless wearing a t-shirt. If yes, if you can't, uh, if you have to be heavier your tops or your belly button showing, hey, just wear a t-shirt. Uh, some people don't have one-piece bathing suits, and we'll. We'll respect everybody's differences, but let's also respect others, not just what we feel is right and appropriate, but again, no, also let me say, no topless or belly button or mini skirt public exposures, including men, whether you're Scottish or not. Okay, mites, I want to be, I don't even like to take my shirt off if I'm swimming within believers and don't want to cause people to feel uncomfortable. Uh, if whether whatever reasons, I'll wear a tank top or a t-shirt even with my swimming trunks. Uh, when I'm more in the public and not around believers, I'll I kind of blend in with the environment, but not inappropriately. I, I do have standards, but I do have higher standards when we're with mixed company of believers yeah, because there's different standards, don't wanna cause anyone to stumble or feel like, um, sometimes people feel competitive or they feel like they're not good enough or wanna be boastful about how good they look. And it's just really not about that. I don't even wanna come close to having the wrong impressions or wrong misunderstandings uh, within us. So seriously, we all should strive to uh, overcome our human nature, but we still have it. We, we still struggle with it. And overcoming our weaknesses, yes, but still 
We're all wanting to flee even the thoughts of fornication. As Yeshua said, to even have thoughts of it are, are still sin. And we should try to avoid that or causing others to have the wrong thoughts. So let's try to be a little extra conservative than we might be in the general public on our own private time, in our own environments where we live, and depending on what the standards are. And, and not that... We, the world's standards are always appropriate either, but uh, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Any clarification, go ahead and contact me privately. But we should all remain very sensitive about causing others to stumble or get offended. And so I want to be sensitive to that and encourage others. As as the Apostle Shaul, uh, Paul, also known as, set the elite example of not even eating kosher meat, if it would cause brethren to stumble or to get offended or have any misunderstandings. And I don't want to go off on that topic, but I understand this very well. I have some YouTube teachings on it and would gladly share or discuss that with anyone privately if they wish to. Now, I would like to move over to our established doctrinal Sukkot standards. Now, please carefully review on your own our Torah Truth Seekers online statement of faith, which includes essential beliefs and important understandings. I'll share with that with you in a minute, but anyone with strong disagreements should either you know, keep such strong disagreements to themselves during our gatherings, our group gatherings, or should not join us if they cannot keep their differences brief and private enough. Now, differences will respectfully come up. I expect that as we all share our beliefs and we all have some different ones here and there. That is uh, something that I do expect and don't want to be overly strict about or micromanage. But these statement of beliefs that I've established and put in writing are not open for heavy debates or trying to change other people's minds or strong opinions during these times of gathering. And uh, so allow me to put it this way. We are not there to change anyone's exhaustively studied strong beliefs. And so we do not want anyone to try to change ours. Okay, again, I'm not going to try to micromanage or expect perfect unity on everything, but remaining realistic rather than idealistic, at least to promote, I want to promote and maintain enough agape, we say agape love, which is a deeper love, a higher love that our creator has for us, even beyond brotherly love and romantic forms of love. We can, we can agree to differ for peace uh, when it's needed and quickly move on to positive topics if we all share that we all do share in common whenever anything gets too heated if we notice things are getting a little heated let's move on and move out of it because during these uh, days of Sukkot we want to focus on meat in due season food in due season uh, the basics and and we just don't have time to study exhaustive topics that require multiple scriptures, different interpretations of scriptures, and should be done during all year round, of course, and willing to do so with anyone who wants to correspond in that regard. But uh, not, we want to spend time together and rejoicing and being out in our creator's creation and with each other in all the right ways to be edifying and to have good, uplifting teachings and Q&A questions and, and worship and so forth. So any complaints, you know, just that come to me, I will evaluate and respond accordingly. And also I want to encourage the general principles. I call them general principles offered to us in Matthew, the book of Matthew's Yahoo, chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. I'll quote it here, I believe from the Tree of Life version. It says, now, if your brother sins against you and, or even just offends you in any way, it doesn't have to be a sin, but let's look at this as a principle. Go and show him his faults while you're with him alone. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. You, you've gained your friendship. You've maintained it. And uh, I know it's difficult when it comes to the opposite sex, and especially we people that we don't know very well. We feel like we can't handle it. 
in a way that would be non-offensive. So sometimes it is good to kind of bypass this on unusual in some circumstances, which would come up more with a scattered group gathering together from different locations, don't know each other very well. Uh, verse 16 here says, but if he does not listen, if he is spoken to, or she, of course, then take it and take, if it's not done handled and improved with one or two people, then, you know, there should be at least two or three witnesses to establish what was said and accurately and so forth. And, but in verse 17, it says, if, if the person refuses to listen and to improve, then we'll We'll bring it to the community, our community, our body of believers. And if someone refuses to listen to even that, then, you know, he's kind of treated as an unbeliever. Um, but, and that's kind of harsh and, and offensive in itself. We don't want to go there. We had to do that with one person last year. And not that we consider them an unbeliever or a pagan or anything like that, but simply they had to make that choice and they chose to leave our our group for the remaining uh, time of the of the days there. And so if that need to be to bring more peace and unity, well, then we'll, we'll have to go through those steps very carefully and not too quickly or inappropriately and, and with, with counsel and with wisdom and discussions with the group involved here. So with that being said, for a brief walkthrough, let's go through a walkthrough of our Torah Truth Seeker Statement of Beliefs, the Essential Beliefs, Statement of Faith, and also some important understandings. Going right to the online document, I'll share this in a link with anyone who's registered with us. It says, we are open to discuss and even change our essential beliefs and important understandings whenever enough evidence is provided and revelation is given by our creator, okay? Uh, however, you know, it's not really for this time period, and, and so we are not open to debating with any strong disagreements on any of them during. Let's talk about during our gatherings. We have limited time together and, and focusing on the basics and the foundational beliefs and the food in due season during each weekly Shabbat, where we're going through Torah portions and uh, scriptures and topics. Uh, Biblical feast days or gatherings or annual ones, they're all listed in Leviticus. We say Vaikra chapter 23. Therefore, please, please, I say, do not gather with us if you would try to persuade any strong disagreements with anyone joining us in commitment with such shalom. We should all remain committed to promote shalom and peace and read Ephesians chapter four. That's a link you can click on. That'll take you right to it. Um, that's, I don't want to spend time with that, but right at the beginning of our essential beliefs, I put not necessarily in chronological order of priority of what's most important, but there are 14 prophecies of the new covenant. And interesting that well, Christianity can agree with about half of them or so. And, and not the other half or so, but and then Judaism will believe in the other ones that Christianity doesn't mean. And I'm talking about mainstream theology from Christianity and Judaism. But when you put all 14 together, you combine to reach the complete wholeness. And you can go through that. I list all the scriptures that are directly related to the topic, to the topic of the 14 prophecies. So moving on to that, we do believe that holy name, the yud heh vav -Hey. We can pronounce it different ways, and there's different ways to pronounce it, but we believe that there's one true, we could say God as a title, uh, Adonai Hashem. He's the creator of heaven and earth. We refer to him as the heavenly father, who also manifested into the flesh through the word, the logos. And so we have the scriptures in John there, also known as the son and the Messiah savior. We believe that uh, that the one true entity, the one true God, if we may put it that way, is also manifested into the world through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Now we do see the, the different personages of the Father and the Son, and you can go through our beliefs on that. If you want to know, we do believe in the, the virgin birth. 
uh, the Alma that's spoken of and prophesied through Jeremiah 7.14. I have YouTube teachings on that. You can see in the comment sections the debate that anti-missionaries have with me and my responses to them. But uh, we will not debate that topic or go through that. If people want to share their beliefs uh, and move on, that's, that's okay. Um, I don't want to censor or offer a lack of freedom of speech in too much regard but simply like i said we want to avoid offenses and trying to dive into de deep uh, debating topics on these when we can discuss that more privately especially during other times of the year and moving on down into our important understandings uh, at the top here we have paul the apostle shaul also known as he is absolutely the New Testament author, uh, the apostle, and they just promote him as a true apostle, both Luke and the apostle Peter, Kepha, Simon. There's different words and titles he's had, but we do accept the apostle Paul as a true apostle. If you are strongly against that, then we don't even want to discuss that during Sukkot. That's not a a topic that's up for debate if you disagree or if you're new or coming from a, a especially a non-christian background that's okay if you haven't really studied and he's easy to to read and misunderstand and trying to understand the different ways to interpret there's a whole apo apologetics to that that i am feel gifted with but i don't want to get into too much of that during the time of responsibilities with leading a group for sukkot and so feel free to go through on the, on all those all the way down. And if you have any big concerns, please email me or contact me privately. And I'll gladly go through the, uh, anything more specifically or, you know, where to draw the lines. If you feel like you'd want to come, but maybe uh, with your differences of belief shouldn't come or would we accept you anyways, feel free to express that to me privately. But just want to try to filter out and, and prevent people from coming that would obviously be too offensive uh, for the, the group here that we're gathering with. And so I'll handle that, any diff difficulties in person the best I can and will appreciate the counsel. Uh, I'd like to seek abundant counsel and try to rejoice and focus on the, the big picture of what we're doing here for Sukkot. Thank you all for watching this entire video and listening to it carefully. If you have, I know your time is very valuable. You're very busy, just like myself. And I also want to thank you for any interest you have in joining us for Sukkot near and inside Yosemite National Park. Boy, there's so many scenes we'll go to each day. Not only this one behind me right now, but let me share a few others with you. Here's another group location for group pictures that we visit every year that we can with El Capitan as another location and getting near uh, Bridal Falls on this one. And here's Lower Yosemite Falls, short video here. So it's all good. We go to Glacier Point and and other locations, Mirror Lake, I won't go through all of them with you, but please, uh, if you feel inspired to join us and compatible with us, please do. We, we love uh, people of like minds and hearts and faiths, and, or at least people who are interested and curious and want to check it out and join us peacefully and respectfully in everything we do there. With all being to the glory the praise, the honor, obedience, blessings, and even rejoicing all unto the Most High, El Shaddai.